In this module, we'll be learning all about TPM, Total Productive Maintenance. We'll apply it to OEE that we just learned and understand how we can improve reliability using this tool. This module will be split into three sections. First of all, we'll go through the definition. We'll then go through a real-world comparison between two companies and a different approach they have to managing their maintenance. And then finally, we'll look at some good KPIs, some good metrics for how you can measure maintenance within your company. In order to explain TPM, I'll start by comparing how two different companies operate. At company A, a machine has been leaking oil for the past week and finally breaks down. The machine operator calls the maintenance team to come and repair it. The maintenance team take over two hours to arrive as they're busy firefighting other problems and breakdowns. The maintenance team arrive to find that a critical gear has broken. They search their spare parts store and look through all the shelves and boxes of replacement gears only to find that they have a huge supply of gears from the previous machine but none from the newer machine in the correct size. As the machine cannot work without the gear, they are desperate for a replacement, so pay an extortionate price to source the part and have it delivered the next day. When the spare part arrives, the maintenance team drop what they are doing and work on replacing the gear as quickly as possible. The maintenance department are commended for the speed in which they sourced and replaced the part and the machine is back up and running after a total of 29 hours of downtime. The maintenance team carry on with their next job, which is to try and fix another breakdown that has just occurred. At company B, John, an experienced operator, notices a quiet but strange grinding noise coming from his machine. During his morning 10 minute TPM routine, he follows a set list of tasks, scanning a barcode once completed. John has been working with the machine for the past 8 years, so knows it inside out. As he is carrying out his set routine of cleaning, lubricating and realigning critical parts, he notices that a gear is starting to wear and a surface crack has formed. Because it is a low cost and critical part, there are spare gears stored just inches away from the machine in case they need replacing. John's manager has told him to fix any problems as soon as possible before they escalate and has given him full responsibility to look after his machine. Not only that, but a member from the maintenance team recently spent a day with John, educating him about the most common faults and what main things to look out for within his machine. John replaces the gear and puts the damaged one in a box next to his machine, scanning the side of the box as he does so. He starts up the equipment and carries on with his daily operation as normal, feeling pleased that his machine is still working as it should be. The maintenance department has been notified when John scanned the box with the replacement part, so only one hour into his shift, a maintenance team member comes over to ask him about what happened and find out what John thought may be the cause of the problem. The maintenance member thanks John for spotting and rectifying the problem and takes the gear back to the maintenance department. After inspection, the maintenance department conclude that the gear had worn as expected and in only a couple of days, planned maintenance order was scheduled to replace it anyway. As the gear is critical for the machine's operation, they order replacement spare gear to ensure the calculated spare parts level is maintained. The machine downtime was zero, the cost was minimal, and they have recorded the data from the breakdown to help continuously improve their maintenance strategy. That example explains many of the principles and characteristics of TPM. If we compare company A with company B, we can see that company B works in a superior way in every aspect. Company B proactively prevented a breakdown from occurring, as opposed to the maintenance team running around firefighting breakdowns. Company B empowered and trained John to take responsibility of his machine and solve basic problems. Company B had zero unplanned downtime as a result, allowing production to run as normal. Company B didn't have to pay the premium price for an express delivery service, but not only that, because they look after their machines and clean and lubricate them daily, they break down much less and last a lot longer, saving additional costs. Throughout this module, we will refer back to this example 
to help relate to the concepts of TPM in a real-world situation. So before we go on, let's define TPM. TPM, Total Productive Maintenance, is a strategy used to maximise machine output by reducing downtime, speed losses and defects, while simultaneously promoting the value of a safe, organised workplace by involving people. Remember the definition of lean, to reduce waste, increase customer value and involve people. This definition is somewhat replicated in TPM as a means to reduce the waste of waiting by involving people. If we break down the definition of TPM, it can be found within the words that make it up. Total refers to what the founder of Kaizen Institute says is the true meaning of Kaizen, improving every day, everywhere, with everyone. In this case, that means with operators, maintenance, and with managers. Productive refers to making the improvements in a productive, cost-effective way. And finally, maintenance refers to the aim of TPM, to reduce machine downtime and optimise maintenance activities. TPM is as much a switch in mindset as it is a tool. The tool itself enables stability and machine effectiveness, but as with many lean tools, if not embraced properly, it will not have the true impact that it could have. The four main objectives can be summarised as maximising overall equipment effectiveness, or OEE, to improve reliability, to reduce overall maintenance cost, and to develop a continuous improvement culture. If you have ever bought a new car, you'll find that for the first couple of months, you clean it every weekend and are very strict about people not eating inside it. After a few months, you still look after it, but perhaps don't clean it quite as regularly. After one year, your attention to cleaning and maintaining it has faded away, and this is human nature. TPM creates the initial need to clean and maintain the equipment, but also provides the routine and structure to ensure it is sustained. TPM helps develop a collaborative, continuous improvement culture where paradigms are broken and operators change from a I operate, you fix attitude to a I take responsibility to look after my machine and ensure it is always available when needed. Notice how it isn't about keeping the machine always running as that would promote overproduction. The machine needs to just be available to produce whenever it is required. The principle behind TPM is that by operators taking ownership of their machines and it becoming their job to keep it in good working condition, the equipment will last much longer, break down less and problems will be fixed before they escalate. Just like in 5S, the sustain aspect of TPM is extremely important. A rather strange but effective analogy for looking at this new operator responsibility for equipment can be seen in the way that we care for a baby. In this example, please think of the baby like the equipment, a parent like an operator, and the doctor as the maintenance department. Just like how a doctor diagnoses and fixes problems with people, whether that be a broken bone or a torn ligament, maintenance members fix problems with machines whether that be a broken gear or worn out parts. As a parent, if your baby starts to cry, your first reaction isn't to call the doctor, visit the hospital or seek medical attention. You carry out the normal expected tasks of checking their temperature, making sure they're hydrated and comfortable. As an operator, you're expected to carry out autonomous maintenance for common faults, just like the baby crying. This may include inspecting, cleaning or lubricating the machine. You should only go to the doctor, i.e. maintenance department, for more severe, unknown or uncommon problems. That is exactly what TPM is. Training the parents how to look after their children and take accountability for their well-being. I know this is a bit of a strange example, but I think it is memorable and helps convey the change of responsibility that TPM provides. OK, that's enough talking about crying babies. Back to the course. Just like how lean is the ongoing pursuit and journey towards a 100% value add, TPM is on a sliding scale from 0% uptime towards 100% uptime and zero downtime. It is about taking steps in the right direction towards this state, continuously moving closer to it. The fact of the matter is, machines do break down, 
people make mistakes and things do go wrong, however much you try and prevent them from happening. The point to stress is that the first thing you need to do is minimise the amount the equipment breaks down, which is where TPM helps. And secondly, when it does break down, make sure that it's fixed as quickly, efficiently and with the lowest cost possible. A good way of demonstrating the TPM shift is by looking at the makeup of both production and maintenance staff times and what they do. The numbers used in this example help demonstrate how the shift in mindset of TPM equates to a change in roles and responsibilities. With a traditional maintenance strategy, production operators spend roughly 35% of their time with their machine broken down. They spend 5% of their time cleaning their machine and the remaining 60% of the time in its operation. The maintenance staff spend roughly half their time firefighting and correcting problems. Think back to company A example. 30% of their time carrying out basic maintenance tasks, such as inspection, diagnosis and lubrication, with 20% time remaining for the proactive, preventative maintenance improvements. The trouble with this situation is that the highly skilled maintenance staff have roughly 80% of their time taking up fixing things, running between problems and carrying out work that they're overqualified and overcapable to do. Let's now compare this to a TPM strategy. Production operators spend 10% of their time conducting scheduled basic maintenance operations, just like what John was doing in the example, including inspection, lubrication and cleaning. 5% of the time their machine is broken down and 85% of the time it is operational. As the inspection, cleaning and lubrication is all completed by the operators who have been trained and take ownership of their machines, maintenance staff now spend 30% of their time reacting to unexpected corrective maintenance tasks, leaving 70% of their time free to teach operators, make reliability improvements and proactively maintain the equipment. The point to stress with this is that the breakdowns have reduced from 35% to 5% resulting in seven times less unexpected downtime. Although the operators are now actually spending more time on carrying out routine basic maintenance, the overall output and uptime of their machines is much higher, allowing planning to much more easily predict and plan the output for each day without sudden surprises and the need for overtime. TPM builds on a 5S culture of operator ownership and pride in their work environment. When deployed correctly, it instills a feeling of responsibility for equipment in all its employees. It also makes huge leaps in removing the barriers between maintenance and operations staff, treating problem solving as a joint effort. TPM involves training operators to undertake basic inspection and maintenance tasks. It wouldn't be possible to talk about TPM and not mention the classic bathtub reliability curve that I'm sure any engineers are very familiar with. The bathtub curve shows how throughout time equipment failure probability changes. To some people's surprise, when equipment is new, it often has the highest chance of failure. It then plateaus, and then once the machine becomes worn and aged, the chance of failure rises again. TPM targets all three aspects of the curve related to equipment failure. Firstly, failures are reduced in the burn-in period by early equipment maintenance, and an improved understanding of equipment use. This counterintuitive idea that equipment is most likely to fail when new is true. Standards may not have been written, operating modes are not fully understood, and the machine hasn't been tweaked to a quality capable stage yet, and the six big losses of OEE haven't been quantified and acted upon. During the plateau period, the failure probability is reduced through autonomous maintenance, I will explain exactly what this is in a minute. The wear out stage is finally managed through predicted and planned maintenance, thereby minimising unexpected disruptions and extending the life of the machinery. The world of maintenance has changed a lot in the past 20 years. Traditionally, machines were a lot simpler than they were today, and also they were produced with the intention to last an extremely long period of time. Nowadays, technology is evolving at such a rate that many machines are not ran until they reach this wear out stage, as evolving technology comes first. Just like with mobile phones, 
your iPhone is unlikely to break from excessive wear before you want an upgrade and access to the new features they offer. Also, machines are often rented or leased, with the expectation that they are upgraded every few years. With all this in mind, I'm not negating the impact that TPM has on life extension. It provides stability and assurance that machinery is available whenever needed. But in terms of extending the lifespan of equipment, although it achieves this, it's not the sole or main focus of TPM. Out of the three areas of the curve, the plateau part is normally the main focus of TPM. The reason being, because this section of the curve is the biggest, by reducing it, it will have the greatest impact on reliability. To improve reliability, you want to reduce the area under the curve so the machine has a lower overall probability of failure. As you can see, by reducing the chance of failure throughout the plateau, you can see a big impact on the area under the curve. I've just noticed that this looks like a banana. That was not intentional, but hopefully makes it easier to remember. TPM can be implemented to a different level of severity, but in this module we'll focus on two main approaches. Firstly, autonomous maintenance, and secondly, on maintenance Kaizen events. I'll start by explaining what autonomous maintenance is. Autonomous maintenance is a state achieved when production operators can carry out all necessary tasks to maintain equipment for common faults. Starting with cleaning and inspection and lubrication, the key words to remember here are training and empowerment. Firstly, operators are trained, and secondly, they're empowered to look after their own equipment. This is by no means a way to upskill production staff to a maintenance member's level. It is to ensure operators feel comfortable inspecting and working with their machines. When conducting a TPM transformation, operators may say, I'm not getting paid to do a maintenance role, it's not my responsibility. To that I would say, firstly they will not be taking on all of the maintenance roles, and secondly it is everyone's responsibility to improve and develop. Continuous improvement should involve everyone, every day and everywhere in the organisation. The saying, you can bring a horse to water but you can't force it to drink comes to mind here. You can upskill operators and provide them with an opportunity to improve, but if they refuse, there is sometimes little you can do. Ultimately, as mentioned in the Kaizen module, a rotten apple can soon spoil the entire bunch, and you don't want rotten apples within your organisation, so to speak. Now that operators take responsibility to autonomously maintain their equipment, maintenance staff now have much more time to spend on improvement activities and preventative maintenance. And also, by working closely with operators and training them on the basics, they now have eyes and ears everywhere, spreading the load of inspection and informing the maintenance team when anything needs further attention. Where before, perhaps operators would either not be skilled in spotting problems or would not see it as their responsibility to raise any issues. This relates to the productive part of total productive maintenance. By upskilling everyone to a level where they can at least identify and report faults, resources are used in a much more effective way. Looking back at the four main objectives of TPM, to maximise OEE, improve reliability, reduce maintenance costs, and develop a continuous improvement culture. Autonomous maintenance helps achieve all objectives. Operators become upskilled and empowered to maintain their own equipment, so maintenance staff can complete the more preventative tasks, thus helping maximise OEE while reducing downtime, i.e. improving reliability, and reducing the associated costs of maintenance. The second approach is through Kaizen events. These are focused workshops with a highly specific aim, in this case, to improve the OEE of equipment. If we cast our mind back to the OEE module, it is a function of availability, performance and quality, three things that TPM aims to improve. A Kaizen event or problem solving workshop focused on improving OEE should inspect the OEE losses in more detail to uncover their root cause, then take measures to prevent them from reoccurring. The problem solving module explains the Kaizen event methodology in much more detail. And lastly, to promote continuous improvement, problems and successes need to become visible. To do this, metrics need to be measured. 
Remember, you can't manage what you can't control, and you can't control what you can't measure. In terms of what metrics to measure, it's up to you, but OEE or continuous improvement metrics like number of machine enhancements or improvements is a good place to start. The current way of working for many companies with functional departments and silos makes no sense, especially for maintenance. Companies typically judge maintenance staff's performance on the number of repairs or amount of work they complete each day. The more repairs they complete, the higher performing they are. This makes no sense for a member of a maintenance team to have objectives that directly oppose organisational goals. Unreliable and unproductive equipment means poor factory performance with lots of waste and an inability to stick to a production plan. On the other side of the scale, it doesn't make sense to have a large, proactive maintenance team if equipment is always available and never breaks down. Would that not suggest an unproductive maintenance department that isn't necessarily required? This paradox is why maintenance as a function needs to be integrated into continuous improvement and the manufacturing process. Responsibilities such as process innovation, research and improvement tasks need to be coupled with metrics like availability, performance and quality. Organisational performance needs to be the top priority for maintenance. It is difficult to select the right KPIs for maintenance staff, but from experience, focusing on leading KPIs like number of improvements or enhancements or percentage of operators trained to autonomous maintenance are much better than only looking at the number of repairs completed per maintenance member per day. And that is the end of this module. I'll now summarise what we have learnt. TPM is as much a shift in mindset as it is an improvement tool. Operators are so close to the machines that they should be the ones that autonomously maintain them. If you think about it, the waste of transport, the MUDA, should not be taking place for the maintenance staff when there are operators so close by. Not only that, but operators know the machines better than anyone else. They can feel the vibrations, they can smell when the fuse is burning, and they can hear the difference in tone of the machine. And lastly, why not instill a sense of pride into the operators? They come to work and they look after their machine. Remember, culture is the sum of all the habits and paradigms, so why not create a TPM habit and instill the right qualities into your organisation? In the next module, we'll be learning about SMED, a very specialised tool that helps reduce the setup and changeover times of machines. It's a very powerful tool.